Hello, my name is Christina and today we're going to work through Lesson 6, The Server's Tray. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to make the code queue play different sounds for different scenarios. Before you get started, you'll want to make sure you have the following materials. Your code queue, your USB cable, and a computer with the code queue app open. Once the app is open, you will want to tether your code queue using your USB cable. And once you are plugged in, remember it should show the rainbow screen to show you're connected. With the app open, click Connect Cube in the top left corner of the screen and select your code cube from the list. Then click Connect. The code in this lesson uses sounds to indicate the tilting position. The code cube will be worn on the wrist to alert the server if their tray is level or tilting. Let's start by going into the control menu and dragging the on program start block into your workspace. Next, we are going to go back into the control menu to get the if then else block. In today's lesson, this block will tell the code cube to display a pre-programmed image if the cube is facing either up or down, and its else section will tell it what to do when the cube is facing the opposite direction. After the if then else block is connected to the bottom of the on program start block, add a cube facing block from the sensing menu. Click the drop down menu on that block and select the one that shows the code cube facing down. Now we have to select what we want the code cube to do when it is facing down. From the matrix menu, select the matrix image block and connect it under the cube facing block, but above the else section. Don't forget, you could have students create their own image using the create image block. Just make sure they monitor their memory when they are doing this. So far, our code is telling the code cube to display the smiley face when it is facing down. Now we need to tell the code cube what to do when it is not facing down. Add a matrix image block in the else section by dragging it from the matrix menu or duplicating the one you already have. Because we do not want our tray to move when we are holding it, let's select a frowny face to show whenever our hand is not level. Since you will not be able to see the image change with your code cube facing down, let's add some sounds to give you a better signal that your tray is not level. Go into the sound menu and bring a play note for blank seconds into your workspace. This block is going to tell the code cube to play a certain note for a certain amount of time before executing the next block. Still, in the else section of the if then else block, add this play note block under the frowny face block. Select a note to play and the amount of time you want it to play. I'm going to select the C4 note and I want it to play for 0.25 seconds. Add another play note block using your preferred method and select a different note to play for the same amount of time as the first one. I'm going to select the note C sharp four. You should now have two play note blocks at the end of your code. Let's also try out the play tone hertz for blank seconds block. Go back into the sound menu, drag out one of those blocks and place it beneath the play note blocks you just added. This block tells the code cube to play a 1000 hertz tone for one second. Let's change the time to 0.5 seconds. Duplicate this block and this time change the hertz to 900 keeping the time at 0.5 seconds. When you have finished creating your code, click Send Code. Remember, if it's already connected, it will automatically start. Because we have our code cube facing down, it should be displaying the smiley face and making no sounds. But once we tilt it, it's going to show the frowny face and start playing sounds to let us know our tray is not level. You'll want to make sure you take some time to test out the different sounds available within these blocks. If you have a hard time deciding which sound is which, what goes with each block, you'll want to make sure you add in a pause block in between each of those blocks so that you can hear the sound better. In case you want to use this code again, we're going to go ahead and save it. So you'll click Save Blocks at the top of the app. Then you'll want to rename it. We are going to rename this one Lesson Number 6. And finally, you'll want to choose a location to save the file. Great job creating the code for Lesson 6. Now let's take a quick look at the extra activities at the end of this lesson plan. Remember that these activities give the students additional practice with the code they just learned how to create. For more CodeCube resources and to check out additional videos, go to pitsco.com forward slash CodeCube.